What's up guys, Tech and More here, and today we're gonna to be going over how to get a tech internship with no experience. Let's get right into the video. Let's begin with the experiences I've had in getting internships in the past. So for some background knowledge, I've had one sweet internship at a top 10 Fortune 500 company, and my next internship will be at a top eight medical device company here in the US. These two experiences and applying for both of these internships give me a lot of information on how to actually apply to internships. The experience itself was really grueling, but I learned a lot from it and I wanted to share that knowledge with you guys. So basically the goal of this video is to guide you guys on how to apply to internships when you have zero experience on your resume or close to nothing. And I suggest anyone who's an undergrad and even high school to watch this video thoroughly and try to apply the concepts I share with you today so that you can eventually end an internship at your top choice company or even just a tech internship in general. Let's get right into it. All right, so step one is to prepare your application. So first off, you're gonna have to have a good resume. This is kind of obvious, but to anyone who's out there who thinks the resume is not that important and it's just summarizes your information, if it's not really outlined very well or it does not show your recruiter and hiring teams who you are in a very simple context, it's gonna be very hard to land an internship that you want. Some important information I learned in the past about resumes includes the fact that your resume should be tailored to the internships you're applying to. So for example, if I'm applying to a sweet internship, I should include some projects that revolve around software engineering and projects that build my friends or family or anything like that. And on top of that, any research experiences I've had, but of of course, this guide is for those of you who have no experience, so we'll talk later about building that experience on your resume itself. If you have some or something you can list from high school or undergrad, just list it, and if it's relevant, make sure it's there so that the recruiter can see it and gather what you know and what skills you have based on just seeing your resume quickly. Another really important piece of information that recruiters may use on you is your LinkedIn profile. So you can see mine down below for an example, but I strongly suggest your LinkedIn is very professional, very to the point, and has very relevant experiences, especially relevant to internships you're applying to right now. You want your LinkedIn to stand out, and of course your LinkedIn can have more information than your resume because it does have basically infinite slots for stuff like volunteering, research experiences, work experiences, and so much more. So yeah, just to summarize, you want your resume to be very detailed, but also have enough information that's relevant to the job you're applying to. Now for step two, you have to target your opportunity. So if I was someone applying with no experience on my resume, I would start first with small companies and work my way up from there. So for example, if I have absolutely no experience on my resume and nothing to add to my LinkedIn, just some high school clubs, for example, I would simply apply to local companies, uh, companies that are near my house or even my school and just try to get some experience on my resume in the first place. Most of the time, you're not gonna land a FANG internship or a top 10 internship for your field right off the bat with no experience. You're gonna have to expect a lot of uphill work from your first internship to get something like that. But to start off, it is completely okay, especially for a freshman or a sophomore, to work at a smaller company that is local and accepts more interns than let's say Google. And here's what I really wanna emphasize. You wanna prioritize experience over pay. Your internship pay is gonna be nothing compared to your full-time pay, especially in tech jobs. And really, if you have to take that unpaid internship over having no internship at all. Working at a startup for free or a small local company that revolves around your area of expertise or something you wanna to go to in the future is much more valuable than working at a local fast food chain. Of course, if you need to make money and you need to go to a fast food chain or anything like that and work a minimum wage job, that completely makes sense. But if you have the opportunity to work at a startup or something that will add to your resume while working for free, I suggest working for free. That route will take you further in my opinion. Now with regards to being an undergrad and what you can do to add to your resume during that time, I would strongly suggest seeking relevant experiences. So this can be anything from research experiences to other internships at your school, even jobs within different clubs. Um, you can even search for like tech roles in different clubs you're in. So for example, if you're in a club that promotes cancer research, you can try to find a tech role in that club or even make your own and bring it up to the president or something like that. Doing this will not only help you in the club itself, but it'll really add meaningful experience to your resume, stuff that recruiters can actually see and look at and actually value when they're trying to analyze your skills in the first place. For step three, we're gonna go over networking and referrals. So step three here, I think is one of the most important steps to you getting an internship, especially your first internship. So here's what I suggest. I suggest you ask your parents or any family members if they work at any certain companies that you would like to work in in the future, or if these companies are in the industry that you wanna get into in the future. Especially in tech jobs, if you have a referral over someone who doesn't have a referral, that referral can take you a long way into getting that first interview. So you can simply go to LinkedIn and just find family members and see where they work, um, find friends and see where they work, friends of family and just message them. I suggest sending these people an email or a text message and just asking for a referral for a certain role or internship at their company. I also suggest expressing why you're interested in that role and also attach your resume so they know what experiences you bring to the table and so that they could possibly give your resume to recruiters at the company itself or hiring managers. With regards to networking, I feel like networking with alumni of your school or just people who have worked at companies that you want to work at and you know personally really helps. You can simply go to LinkedIn and just try to find a list of alumni from your school that have worked at a company that you want to work at or currently work at that company and ask them how they got the role. Ask them what they thought about it and ask them what they would do if they were in your shoes. Getting all this information can only help you in the future. And even if you don't land that internship the first time, keeping that connection in the future can help you get that full-time role at that company in the future or even an internship in a later summer. Now for step four, we're going to go over engaging and talking to recruiters. 
This step is very important in the early on stages of getting an internship. It might not be as important when you have a lot of experience on your resume, but when you first start out and have little to no experience on your resume, I strongly suggest going to career fairs and talking to recruiters at companies you want to work at. When you're a freshman, you may feel discouraged as companies tend to go for juniors and sophomores when hiring interns, but putting yourself out there and talking to these recruiters will only help you. For example, I spoke to many recruiters at my first career fair, and although I didn't get an offer or an interview, I did get to know the recruiter and add them on LinkedIn, keep them in my social circle, keep them in my network for the future, and even apply to the same companies the following summer after I had some experience that summer. This helps so much and keeping these networks and connections will only help you in your long-term career goals. So yeah, I suggest trying your best to be engaging with the recruiter and trying to share your interests and why you'd be interested in working at, a, at their company. After you speak with these recruiters at the career fairs, I strongly suggest you follow up with them on LinkedIn or email. After they give you their information or business card, email them or message them on LinkedIn and say that you're really happy with that they spoke with you and you enjoyed your conversation. And you can even ask if there are any further steps you can take to make yourself a stronger applicant for their role. Now for step five, acing your interviews. Once you hit this step, you've gotten an interview. And once you get an interview, you know you've done something right. So you know your resume is probably pretty good and your LinkedIn profile product probably helped as well. So from here, it's on your conversational skills and ability to be confident with the interviewer. Something I really like to emphasize with anyone who asks me questions about interviews is the fact that when you're in an interview, do not act like a know-it-all, please. Whether you're the smartest software engineer to ever live or the best mechanical engineer to ever live, you do not want to act like you're better than the engineers or the workers at the company you're applying to. Please try to stay humble and in the interview, emphasize the fact that you're willing to learn and grow. This simple statement has helped me so much in interviews and has also helped me get so many next round interviews after my first interview. So just sharing that you're willing to learn and grow and network with your peers and just enjoy the internship as a whole rather than just going to the internship being the best and leaving really shows that you're gonna offer more to the table than just being a robot who can code very well. Remember, companies aren't hiring you just for your skills. They're hiring you for your ability to work in a workplace. Although this video isn't tailored to sweet roles, I would suggest practicing leak code, and you can see videos on that on YouTube all over the place. I could do a video on it later, but just make sure to do some leak code practice before those coding interviews. But for anyone who doesn't have a coding interview for their internship, just practice interviewing with your friends, family, and even career workshops at your school if they offer them, and just practice speaking to someone or even to a camera. And doing that alone will help you a lot during the interview. Now for step six, I want you guys to take all of this that you've learned from this video and your experiences applying to internships and continue to learn from it. Even after taking all these steps, you may not land an internship that following summer. And that's okay. I want you to learn from every experience you've had, and especially from the interviews you've done. The more interviews you've done, the more used to them you will be. And you can take this experience to your next application cycle and just keep on going. Eventually you will land one. I did mention earlier on the video about research experience and how it can help your application as well. And I'll do a separate video on how to get research experience as an undergrad with no experience as well. So keep an eye out for that video too. So overall guys, I wanna reiterate the fact that you really have to stay persistent, try your best, continue to apply. This is a numbers game and apply these techniques in all your internship applications and interviews. And I feel like one day, eventually you will land that interview. And from the interview, it's all up to you. Your conversational skills, your ability to be confident and show that you want to learn will help you in the long run. Let me know if you guys land that internship in the comment down below or in an interview or anything like that. If you have any questions, please comment down below as well. I'll respond to all the comments below. All right, that's it for the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.